Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining AM this morning to talk about enhanced 911 and the compliance that's needed inside of organizations to meet the regulatory changes in 2020, 2021, and 2022. So, our agenda today is going to be um, broken down into two parts. Um, a and will be presenting um, the differences between 911, E911, or enhanced 911 um, versus um, next generation 911. We're going to talk through some of the ways in which those options are provided. We're going to talk about the regulations that impact enhanced 911. We're going to talk about best practices um, in the first half of the hour. And then we're going to turn it over to Red Sky. And Red Sky is going to talk to you about the solutions they have in place to help you meet those regulatory and compliance needs with the various technologies that you might have in place. We will have a section for Q&A at the end. So um, feel free to send your messaging to um, within chat as they come up. We have a group of folks that can answer your questions. And um, some of them will save for the uh, Q&A and we'll make sure you get written follow up on any of the questions that you ask with um, answers and make sure that uh, you're scored away. Evan, since we do have um, kind of a low attendee, which is cool, are you okay with me just allowing them to unmute and mute themselves if they have any questions during your presentation? Sure. Okay. So I'm Evan Hatchell. I'm a solutions architect in the Arizona office for a and I've been in collaboration for over 20 years, um, primarily around Cisco, uh, but that ex extends over to multiple systems um, on the contact center side and on the voice side from key systems to legacy PBX to hybrid systems to current um, on-prem systems like call manager all the way up through cloud platforms such as Cisco or Microsoft. On the team, we also have um, Rebecca. She's our director of collaboration and engineering out of New Mexico. We have David Vigil. He's a solutions architect out of New Mexico. We have Brett Atkinson, another solution architect out of our Denver, Colorado office. So a and is a multidisciplinary team that really focuses on the end user requirements to meet a particular goal of the organization. So those business drivers. We want to enable you to work in the way that your organization wishes to work, but also help guide you towards best practices um, and integrations that that make sense to help enhance that. So we do this in a in a collaborative way with um, guiding you towards sustainable solutions and workflows. And what we mean by that is. We not only focus on the technology itself, but what it means to operate and maintain that hardware. So we, we focus on the solution as well as the operation and we can help you maintain those or um, provide any questions um, and answers that you might have related to your platform. a is primarily a, um, master in Cisco collaboration. And we also focus on um, all the specializations under the Cisco umbrella, and we are a Cisco collaboration specialist also. So we're going to start the, the discussion um, and conversation with what is 911? What is E911 or enhanced 911? And what is NG911 or next generation 911? So traditionally on 
legacy phone systems, when you pick up the handset and you dial 911, the, the PSAP or the public service answering point will receive a, um, the phone number you're calling from and receive the address. This is how traditional phone systems at your house work with a, with a standard analog line. As regulation has evolved, they've recognized that there are other ways in which to provide more exact detail, particularly around the enterprise side where you could be in a very large building, call 911, and they do not know how to get to you in that emergency. So regulations have expanded and they're calling that um, kind of technology segment enhanced 911. So with, what that means is in addition to the number you are calling from, you're also going to send information around the business that you're calling from, and you're gonna enhance that location information with where you are to include the address and things like the cubicle or the floor so that if you're in the building and say the fire department comes on site, they know um, how to get to you and help you. In addition to that being provided to the um, PSAP, to the 911 operators, they've also added some abilities that folks should be utilizing so that when you are on wireless or on voice over IP technology, that there is a way for that device to tell your phone system where you are so they can route emergency operations to that location and help you. In addition to that, they request that through the various regulations that you also notify someone internally and that there is a team that can assist you or have the ability to assist you if the business deems that that is uh, that that's critical or that's important. Moving forward, so today, all the regulation it focuses and stops um, around enhanced 911. But moving forward, you're going to see conversations around next generation 911. And so, what's important about next generation 911 and to be thinking about where um, the federal bodies are, are going is there's a greater concern that folks could ask for assistance or text into um, an emergency message straight to 911 or be able to provide additional information during that emergency via something like a smartphone. So there's ongoing conversations around when people change that modality beyond voice, when they can locate you, but they move that to other forms of communication, things like interpretation and translation, one is the spoken word and one is the type word, become critical because there are more than 200 languages um, that are generally spoken in the world. And they also need to be able to, in context, translate that text over to um, an emergency message so that you're able to communicate with them. So regulations and technology are um, rapidly evolving around the next generation 911 system. How the data is carried is a little more technical between the systems. But essentially, Enhanced 911 uses a centralized database that you see referenced on the slide as ALI, and that can be transmitted to the carrier over multiple means. That can be a central database with a central body that helps match up that data. But moving forward into next generation 911, there's a greater focus on information coming from the endpoint directly, so that if you were to call 911, 
your cell phone would transmit where you are, whether you're engaging them in text or other means also. So that ties in a greater focus that you'll see in the news around cellular enhancements, um, et cetera, all aiming towards next generation 911. So pay attention to the to the conversations, pay attention to some of the sites that are dedicated to um, 911 news, some of which will be um, referencing and providing you links to later in the conversation. Hey, Evan, I'd like to jump in real quick. I just want to point something out for our customers who are out there on the previous slide. Um, as far as referencing for basic 911, I just want to point out that it's based off of location of where that circuit is located. And then, as uh, Evan had mentioned, there's a database for enhanced 911. And some of the questions I know customers come up with is, well, how do I maintain that information? And maintaining that information can be handled by the carrier or it can be handled by like systems like emergency responder from Cisco. So if you ever have a question about how do I maintain that data? How do I update that information? Please reach out to your account manager or reach out to your um, uh, circuit provider because they may have information on how to maintain this information moving forward. It's don't assume that the carrier has just set it up for you, um, especially if you're doing a hand sign one one because most cases it's not. It might just be the headquarter address and you don't want to be caught in that um, situation where you may have a location in, in Texas or Arizona and the 911 address that's showing up when something happens is actually your Albuquerque headquarters. So just something to keep aware of and keep in mind as you guys are looking at your 911. Great feedback, David. Thank you. No problem. Is there any questions from the attendees currently so far? Um, that was quite a bit of content just to see if you guys had any specific questions and we'll take silence as a no. Okay. Well, then this slide speaks to fixed versus nomadic versus dynamic. So it's, it's a lot of words and a lot of language. And you're going to be reading about it and seeing it referenced in um, some of the data that's out there. So I wanted to take a moment and help relate those words to what they mean in regulation and some of the technologies. So fixed is a device like a phone in your office, in your building. We know today how to provide and configure 911 services for those. As David mentioned, those are provided via um, trunks or uh, PRIs on site, um, could be provided by when you dial 911, it goes out an analog site at a remote site. So they're tying a physical phone service to the location of that device. There are also services that can help modify that, as David mentioned, like, um, Cisco Emergency Responder, or some people just refer to it as CER, that helps you further define information around those devices and sends that along to 911. Well, now we enter into this notion of we have these devices that can move, such as cellular phones. And on those phones, you might have a WebEx Teams calling plan or you might have a Microsoft Teams, or you might have some type of soft phone, and you have the ability to technically dial 911. Or maybe that's another type of mobile device in our offices these days where you can take your laptop into another room or go sit outside, and you have the ability to interoperate and, and call um, through the public telephone network. Well, how do we handle that? And so that is generally the notion or the words used around nomadic and nomadic talks about how we protect those phone calls and those individuals and still recognize where the, the person is. And that can be done a myriad of ways that can be done through um, local wireless networks and to saying that if I'm in this segment of my wireless network in the office, 
that that's going to transmit a particular location that I am all the way back through applications such as Red Sky that can coexist with a platform and help transmit enhanced information. Then we also have this notion of dynamic. Dynamics, one of the words that um, can be used a number of different ways. And so I always exercise caution when you hear that word, but I'm going to refer to the word dynamic as in a technical ability. And specifically that technical ability is for the device itself, say if it's a cell phone or whatever it might be to transmit where the device is and the device tells you um, um, directly to the PSAP that here's my geographical location, here's my coordinates. And that is tied in a direct stream without a middle party provider um, or someone having to um, validate your location straight to the most efficient emergency office provided. So sometimes the words are used interchangeably in that, well, we're dynamically updating blah, blah, blah for nomadic or nomadic can refer to just someone that moves and how the um, dynamic communication is provided um, to the PSAP. Well, to add kind of insult to injury and more complication to this, we now have multiple voice capable technologies. So we have the notion of these soft clients that have been enabled, whether that be something like a Slack or Microsoft Teams or, or Cisco WebEx Teams where you have calling available. So now that further complicates the, the notion of securing our communications in an emergency. So um, later on in the conversation, we're gonna um, talk about the um, some of the, the technology um, that can be used to address um, the nomadic and dynamic nature of telephony and how you can reduce your risk for your um, internal and external customers at your business. So earlier I referenced some of the compliance that's come into play. So we've got Carrie's law that came in the, into um, existence on February 16th, 2020. And that basically said that anytime you dial 911, you don't prepend any, any additional numbers. So I have to dial 8911 or 9911. I should be able to go to any device and dial 911 and it should operate. Well, further, they, um, the government said, well, Ray Bombs Act phase one, we're going to start moving that in into a little more detail. So we want for any fixed IP system, so those phones sitting in offices or wherever they might be, um, to transmit a dispatchable location. So that's the that's the word you'll you'll hear used, and that means that they also get for that device, a street address, floor, suite, office number, cubicles, et cetera. So there's a standard um, way in which you break down the location of devices and provide that data to 911. Further, there's new compliance, um, which I'll call phase two, coming in in January 6th of, of 2022. And what that means is that any non-fixed devices, anything that's nomadic or dynamic, those cell phones, those laptops that can move that maybe you don't have a solution for, they have put some regulation in place and said, well, we need to have a solution for that so that we can assist and help those people. Any questions so far on um, up through the federal laws and, and what's in place today? Mark and Landry, did e either one of you know about the phase two? Okay. 
Evan, before you go on to the next slide there real quick, I think the other thing to point out, um, one thing that's been, you know, I guess directed for a while now is the E911 notification. I know you kind of hit on it there at a high level, but as part of Kerry's law, right, being able to dial out to 911 um, without having to place a nine is is been there for a while, but also notification. So this is another important thing to just know that hey, if 911 is dialed, we need to also be alerting someone, either a party or, or someone at that location to say, hey, 911 is being dialed so that we can assist. Let's say it's a big building, right? We we want the receptionist or whoever's at the front to be able to help get the emergency services in. So just know that that is another component to all of the notification, sending the right information as we've been talking about here today. So just um, so Evan, um, neither Mark or Landry knew about the nomadic. So basically phase two. So I, I don't know if you guys want to touch a little bit more about kind of how that infects. Um, Mark and Landry, do you guys have a bunch of remote workers out there that are could be affected by or you guys could be affected by phase two? So they're both on a hybrid model, so they're definitely affected. Okay. I don't know if you guys want to stem some further. And both Mark and Landry, I can unmute you guys if you wanted to speak. Let me just go ahead and mute you all, and then, um, and that way you guys can talk freely <laughs> if you want to be unmuted. So yeah, this is Mark. This is all new to me because I've just just taken over the uh, uh, the the Cisco network here. So it's all brand new to me. Okay. So there's there's um, we'll service about some of the options later on with um, how we can provide. Um, that notification service so you can be compliant through all the, the phases and acts through some of the solutions with, um, with Was someone else going to say something? Okay. I'll move on to state laws. So what you really just need to understand is that no matter what federal guidelines must be adhered to and that state laws um, can be more strict than the federal guidelines. So subscribe and pay attention to your state laws. We'll provide some links later on where, where you can see those um, regulations and stay on top of those because those evolve. Okay. Probably not terribly pertinent to everyone on this call today, but I did want to touch on some of the international variances um, as an example. So in the US, we have a notion that if dynamic information is available, then it's routed to the directly to the PSAP for that location. If nothing's available today, we route to a national call center for screening before being transferred back to the, to the local location. So you might see that depending on where you're calling in Arizona, for example, anything within the state goes to DPS. Um, DPS screens your call on where you are and then will transfer you straight into your local police department or sheriff's office or um, that localize 911 responder so that they can assist you. Um, other states and international level that also exists. Well, Canada, Ireland, and UK, um, you don't ever go straight to the local PSAP. It always routes all calls to a national center. In France, Germany, and Spain, those are 
um, always routed to a local PSAP, um, re regardless of, of where you are. In Australia, they put that responsibility onto the local carrier to route that. So the carrier, when they provide you a number, they have to handle those solutions and make sure you're routed to that location. If you're in Japan, there is no notion of an emergency call. So those are some interesting variations to be aware of if you provide services or people are potentially using your services um, internationally and what might be available in those countries. Um, definitely pay attention to the international rules for the um, country that you're in so that you handle that routing accordingly. So I'm nearing the end of some of our conversation here on the, the high level um, E911, and I wanted to provide you some best practices. First off, always engage with your general counsel, your legal team, your um, the folks that are responsible for the, the overall regulation and compliance within your organization. They might not be aware of Carrie's Law, Ray Bombs Act, et cetera. Seek their guidance and seek their direction as you implement solutions. Make sure you build a sustainable process so that as folks move within your organization, change job roles, et cetera, that changing the location of those individuals is always addressed. So if you're not using something more dynamic, but you're using something tied to a particular location or particular trunks, et cetera, make sure that anyone and everyone who could move someone is tied into your process. And so you're able to stay on top of those to limit the risk and the liability of the organization, but making sure that in the event that someone does need to utilize emergency services, that they haven't decided to pick up their desk phone, especially in you know these COVID days and move to another building and plug in and operate and you didn't know about it. And maybe you don't have the technology in place to handle that situation. So you didn't know better than to check it. Um, talk to us about the various ways in which you can implement and operationalize your plan for um, these regulations and compliance with those regulations. Make sure you have a 911 test plan. Make sure you document regular testing. Part of it is showing that you've done your due diligence as the telephony administrator and that you're providing that service and making sure it's always available in the event of emergency. But there are ways to build test plans without calling 911 so that you can dial an alternate number that performs a similar action, triggers a notification, and then tells you what information it might send. So you can validate that everything's working without impacting your users, without impacting 911, and ensure that you can continue to do, do so. With today's regulation, um, never intercept a 911 call. And what I mean by that is, oh, I'm going to fix this. I'm just going to route my 911 calls to a front desk or our internal call center. The regulations speak against doing that. And I've seen a few folks lean in um, towards that to um, as a as a resolution. And unfortunately, it's not one. What you can do is have them listen in on the line without modifying the phone call. You can tell them that something's happening through text, instant messaging, email. So there's many ways in which you can communicate something's going on. But one of those is never stick something in the middle where they have a barrier to directly reaching the 911 side. There's also very specific requirements in the regulations that I want you to pay attention to, and that is that 911 notifications have to go to, quote, designated personnel. So again, speaking with your general counsel, working 
through your organization to help understand those regulations and implement a long-term sustainable solution that ultimately protects um, your internal and external customers. And we are getting close to the half hour, just so you are aware. Yep. So last but not least, I wanted to touch a little bit on future regulations. So there's lots of language around requirements around 5G technologies with location accuracy of mobile devices and greater requirements coming that way. So you're going to see a lot of applications and technology focusing on on various cellular or wireless technologies to help with that. They're actively working on um, emergency routing and text messages, so those are handled appropriately. And then I know that there's a greater concern, especially as you introduce text, as I talked about earlier, with how you handle that in an emergency situation, since there very well could be um, many different languages spoken. We provided a link to the various um, regulations and um, um, state laws that you can that you can um, go research and provide to your council. And uh, of course, always come back to your local solution architect team or our collaboration team on any questions you might have. So, without further ado. Um, we're going to transition the call over to our partner, Red Sky, and how they can help assist you meet these regulatory needs in your environment. Thanks, Evan, and thanks to the AM team uh, for inviting us on today. Uh, let me share my screen. And Mark and Landry, did you have any questions at this time? Just want to make sure we're being sensitive to if you guys had any thoughts or questions. Looks like we're good. Real quick before you get started there, uh, Adam. So I just want to turn around and say great, great, great overview. Evan, the one thing I'd love to, you know, you talked about making sure customers are talking with their legal compliance counsel, and that, that's huge. The other thing you're going to want to make sure that you're doing is, is making sure executive management is also aware of the compliance rules and regulations. Because, again, you want to make sure that you're, you're keeping your customers safe and keeping the company out of the paper at the same time. Get it, Adam. Yeah, great point, Joe. And, and, and thanks, Evan, for... Um, you know, for that presentation too. that the best practices slides really good. Uh, just for, for a quick introduction. Um, so our company is red sky technologies. We are a 3rd party E911 solution provider that partners with a and um, with their customers to help, uh, provide and enhance, uh, their current telephony environments to help meet the regulations and make sure their, um, customers and, and coworkers are safe. So my name is Adam Vitas. I'm the sales director um, that covers our Southwest, which is, is most of the AM territory, uh, New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado. I also cover California, Nevada, uh, all the way over to Louisiana. And Joe, you want to introduce yourself? Thanks, Adam. So I am Joe Ruska. I am the senior manager for service providers as well as our channel partners. And so AM is one of our partners. Uh, fairly new with actual Red Sky um, uh, since June, and I spent the last 14 years of my life at Cisco as the go-to-market lead for pretty much everything in the in the partner organization. So, back to you, Adam. Yeah, great. So, what uh, what we're going to talk about today is really a uh, high-level overview of of what Red Sky can help us us with. Um, obviously, we can also do a one-on-one. Uh, talk in the future too, but um, we'll, we'll talk high level what we can help assist with in terms of your current uh, environments. So really, we try to make E911 easy at Red Sky. The three things that we really uh, stress and say that you need for a complete E911 solution is really to uh, have three things done, find, route, and notify, 
And we support any type of UC platform. We are a big Cisco partner, uh, so we can work with WebEx uh, calling, uh, on-premise CUCM. Uh, we can work with Cisco Emergency Responder if you have that deployed. We can work with any type of soft phone on Cisco, but we can also work with other call servers, uh, really any type of call server, any type of soft phone uh, we, we have uh, coverage for. Um, Again, the, the three things that we try to stress for is find, route, and notify, which means for find, uh, finding phones, uh, whether they're on and off premise, for routing, routing calls to the appropriate 911 call center, which is the public safety answering point or PSAP in the middle, and then notify internal security that a call was placed. Uh, doing these things will help you make sure that you are compliant with state and federal leg uh, legislation, like Evan mentioned, carries law in the Ray Bombs Act. But really, it's it's getting E91 coverage for your workforce and making sure that they are protected in the event of a true emergency. So, how it works for uh, for finding phones? If I am, um, you know, within a ten story building, and I move from the second floor up to the tenth floor. Red Sky or Cisco has a way to actually locate that person, whether you've moved your hard phone or if you've moved a soft phone uh, and taken your, your laptop and uh, went to the conference room. We have a way to actually track that and manage that process for you. So that way the right location is going to be updated when let's say Joe uh, places an emergency call. So another screenshot of how different ways you can break out your different locations or the dispatch locations. Um, so if you have a three-story building and you're on Office 301, uh, you could say third floor Office 301 as your dispatchable location. The routing portion, um, like Evan mentioned, you, you should definitely uh, touch base with your local exchange carrier or your provider if you are covered on this, but Red Sky has an easy way to actually route emergency calls because we have access to any PSAP across the United States. We also have coverage in Canada, but we have a way to actually route the call, you know, um, on your behalf to the local public safety answering point or PSAP and, and make it a lot easier versus going to your carrier. And again, we can cover any office uh, that you have as well as um, locations across Canada. So our solution for that is our product called E911 Anywhere. And this is really our base product that I think about 98% of our customers use. And this is our routing tool. It's a cloud-based solution that will route the emergency call to the local 911 call center. Alongside E911 Anywhere, we have a way to support remote workers. So if you're a software user and you're in Portland, Oregon, and you place an emergency call from your laptop using Cisco Jabber, we can actually route that call to the local PSAP in Oregon from our routing service. And here's a snapshot of what our application looks like, which is called My E911. And this can be installed on any, uh, on any uh, Mac or Windows laptop. We also have a mobile app for cell phones or tablets as well. But this will um, basically be running in the background and force your remote soft phone users to put in and uh, select a location when they are off premise. And that way that location is going to be used to make sure that they are routed to the right place, but also to check that box of compliance for Ray Bombs Act, which goes into effect um, within a month from now, January 6, 2022, which Evan mentioned. And then last uh, notification. So this is part of Carrie's law. And this can be done by Red Sky or by uh, uh, Cisco or some other call servers have a way to notify, but uh, we have a way to, uh, with our emergency onsite notification solution, we have a way to notify internal security, onsite security, when there is an emergency call placed and where that location is. That way, onsite security is aware of the call. They can either meet emergency responders at the front, um, front gate or the front office or get to that, uh, that true emergency and get to the caller to, to help assist. So we're trying to, again, make sure that your company is aware of the emergency calls so that they can act accordingly. Evan mentioned earlier that 
you know, we don't want to uh, intercept the emergency calls, meaning you don't want to route the calls first to an, to an on site uh, front desk or security team. We want the call to go to the PSAP first because the PSAP has the way to dispatch emergency responders. But it's still nice to, to make sure that your emergency on site uh, emergency team security team is aware of the call. So we do have an, an add on feature that allows your security team to be bridged into the call to monitor the call. So the call will go to the PSAP still, but it will also alert your security team to actually let them listen into the call to hear the severity of the emergency call. Is this an active shooter? Is this a heart attack? Is this a missile? So that way they are more aware of besides just getting a notification that there was an emergency, they can actually listen in. Uh, as well as barge into the call and even record the call. And I know uh, a lot of um, a lot of AM's customer base has Cisco as the uh, call server. Um, most of the times when you have CUCM, you have a product called Cisco Emergency Responder. So this is a snapshot of how Red Sky complements and works with Cisco CUCM plus CER. And this is what a lot of our customers have. It's a very easy add on solution where you actually integrate your CER database um, and hook it into our cloud called E911 Anywhere. And then you route your emergency calls from CUCM at the top to Red Sky's cloud through a SIP trunk or through your um, PRIs or, or on um, uh, SIP trunks with your carrier and route the emergency call to Red Sky. Red Sky will then in turn route the call to the local 911 call center on the top right of the screen. And then we will support your at home soft phone users, whether you're using WebEx, Jabber, Microsoft Teams, um, Avaya, any type of soft phone, we can support and make sure that those uh, locations are updated to our cloud when they are truly remote. And I'll pause there. Are there any questions? Um, that I can answer. There was a question, um, and Landry, I don't know if you want to unmute yourself in case there's a little bit more information we need, but basically the question was, is how does this work with, um, if you have a third party vendor that handles their 911 data? So, in the third party meeting, Landry, um, like a like a Red Sky or like a local exchange carrier or another E nine one one solution provider out there. I'm assuming. Hey, so, I'm from the Southern New Indian Tribe. Um, our entity is actually the Southern New Shared Services, which is the. Uh, IT support arm for the Southern New Indian tribe. Um, as a tribal entity, we also have a um, police force, and mm -hmm. um, we actually use a product or a, a third party entity called Entrado. And that's where mm -hmm. our um, law enforcement division upload all the um, call manager data to, and we, we we have like a quarterly audit where we send updates to where you know devices are located or where users have moved around and they in turn upload this data to the service call Entrado. So mm -hmm. is Red Sky a competitor to Entrado, I guess is my question. And um, mm -hmm. that previous question was was coming to with the previous presentation, which I didn't know that you were presenting so i think mm -hmm. maybe entrado is a um is a competitor with red sky <laughs> after yeah. hearing hearing your your presentation so i'm like okay well i guess red sky does offer some more tools that how we're doing it currently with entrado is 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 manually and you know exactly it would be something that i would need to probably discuss with our telephony um, admin, who unfortunately is not on the call today, but yeah, it, it's, it's just one a little question that I, I kind of had. Yeah, that's a good question. And yeah, you, you, you're correct. Uh, Entrado is another third party 
E911 solution provider, they're a direct competitor of Red Sky. I think our advantage is, is making your telephony team's life easier in the management process. So instead of uploading that data manually into Entrato, we can actually sync it over to us either through a CER or through a REST API to make sure that the, the data is, <clears throat> is, is synced easier. Um, but yeah, you can certainly um, talk with Entrato too, or a and I know they, they can work with Entrato too to help better that product as well. But yeah, we are a direct competitor. Um, I think we have a little bit easier um, management but you know they're they're still doing you know pretty much what red sky is doing which is taking your alley data and getting it to your police or your peace app i'm just doing a quick time check um so yeah it any any more questions uh, before we go into um uh, uh, we'll, we'll touch briefly on the webex calling because i know that's a, a big topic talking point as well. I think I, th I know yeah. one of Mark has a hard stop at 11. I'm not sure if Landry does either. So just. Okay. Yeah, we'll be done in time. Yeah, we'll just spend another five minutes or so. And I'll pass it to uh, to Joe and he'll talk quickly about WebEx calling. Oh, cover this slide. I'll, I'll take the next slides. Sorry about that, Adam. Okay, no worries. So Red Sky has, uh, you know, WebEx calling is really the, the latest and greatest from Cisco in terms of moving to the cloud. And Red Sky is the um, selected provider for WebEx calling for E911, uh, which makes it easier because the routing of the trunking method is already in place. Um, so it's step in step uh, two and three, when the call goes to your cloud of WebEx calling, it's going to be in turn directed to Red Sky's cloud, E91 Anywhere, also called Horizon Mobility, which is our platform just for WebEx calling. Um, so the, the good news is that the routing is already set up out of WebEx calling in the control hub. And same with the previous slide that we showed on um, CER, we can support remote workers with the same My E911 application for your users that are off premise, working from home or at a Starbucks. We can make sure that the location is synced from uh, my number one up to our cloud to make sure that they are ultimately routed and have the dispatchable location information. And so Joe, real I'll pass quick, it to you now. Yeah, thanks, Adam. So, real quick, just to share with you an announcement that Cisco and Red Sky has come in an agreement. And so, Cisco is going to be providing and including Red Sky solution. For all customers that are based in the US for both their WebEx calling platform as well as their UCM cloud platform. And so, if you're currently on a subscription on either 1 of those platforms, you are entitled to get the red sky solution. So, what does that mean? So, we're going to provide the horizon mobility solution. Um, our cloud offering there, the E911 anywhere. Now, the key here is. Um, if for some reason there's a misconfiguration in how you've set your uh, your devices up, every call that because it does go to you know Red Sky, we will in turn even if we don't have a dispatchable location, we route that call to the emergency response center, um, and where that call is actually answered by a live individual that will determine where the person is actually located. And in turn, route that call to the appropriate PSAP. Now, obviously, there will there is a charge for this, and Cisco is going to uh, determine what that charge is. From a software standpoint, we're providing the My E911 client. We're also providing our EI client, which is that screen pop capabilities, as well as the notification for text and email. Next screen. So call to action for you guys, you know, the 1st thing we want to make sure is that you're reviewing your existing environment. We want to make sure that encourage you as you've heard Evan say, talk to your legal counsel. You want to make sure that you are compliance. We want to make sure that you're also talking to your, your executives. Because at the end of the day, nobody wants to find themselves on the front page of the newspaper because they were not compliant. So, some of the things that you're going to need if you not sure if you want to make sure that you're in compliant, you know. 
AM, you're going to want to work with them, but they're going to need to know the manufacturer and the type of PBX you're currently on, the number of buildings, the number of ELINs, and the number of soft phones. That's going to help them determine exactly what kind of solution you need. So you're going to want to make sure you're reaching out to your AM contact. Next slide, Adam. And ultimately, we're going to work with those guys. You know, we're going to help get you guys the quotes that you need. Um, Adam is like he said, he is the, uh, the regional sales rep covering that area. And so myself, um, here's our contact info, a link that you could share and or look, share with the rest of your team, you know, which is the Red Sky 911, the E911 legislation information. So definitely as you're talking with the rest of your organization, it's something you're going to want to share that and make sure that uh, the executives are aware of that. Next slide, Adam. Another thing that we also have is the fast track for the E911 compliance handbook. Again, the link is down at the bottom. Definitely encourage you to make sure that you're reading it, download it. Um, and again, it's something that you're going to want to make sure that you're talking with your organization and making sure that you are compliant. And I think the next slide is our thank you slide. So try to keep that quick and short. Uh, I definitely appreciate everybody's time and allowing us to present to the, to our customers and your customers. Rebecca, back to you. Awesome. So Landry, do you have any questions? Um, again, this will be recorded, so we'll send you the link. Um, we definitely will be having follow-ups with each one of you. I know Mark already dropped, but it's a lot of information and content. Um, especially the nomadic, so basically the remote worker side of it. Um, but just want to make sure if you had any additional questions or comments. I think he's good. He's good. He's good. All right. Well, again, thank you for, for attending, Landry. I appreciate it. You'll be getting an email with a survey. Um, I believe there might be a prize that you possibly could win on that survey. So just keep a look out for that email. And then again, we'll have a follow up for you. So thank you, Adam and Joe, for sure. And great job, Evan and David and Brett for team. So I appreciate at least getting this together really quickly to get in front of you um, to make sure we could at least give you the note, you know, the new stuff that's coming out compliance wise. Great job. And it looks like Lingy's got uh, really good odds at winning there. So, <laughs> <clears throat> Great job, everyone. Thanks, Rebecca, for being Nirvana. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Great Thank job. Bye-bye, guys. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.